When it comes to manufacturing things like gears, the more simple option is always going to be the route you want to take. And that's exactly what I want to show you in today's video. A very simple machine that takes care of a very complex process. Just want to give a huge shout out to the main sponsor of our channel, Dynamic Machine of Detroit. If you are in the Canadian or Michigan area, make sure you email sales at dynamicmachine.com. So today I want to show you a very simple yet genius machine. Now, the number one thing that I will say is very interesting about this thing is that it is really simple. The whole purpose of this machine is to deburr parts, particularly gears. Now, what's cool about this is no matter what your gear size or shape is, it's going to function the same way every time. Now, why is this special? Well, because if you used a conventional CNC machine to deburr this, you would have to create a new part program for every type of gear you run, which is complex. And then you'd also have to orientate the part perfectly to your part program. So instead of doing all that, this machine just uses simple gravity and deburs any gear you want. I am never gonna crouch for an intro again. All right. So let's go over everything you need to consider when setting up a part on this machine. Starting with, is your work holding. Now, here I am using a three jaw chuck for my part, but it's not too big of a deal if you wanna put your part on an arbor like this. Simply set it on the arbor and tighten it down. But that right there is the first thing you need to consider is your work holding. Now, the next thing you need to consider is, is your stylus. Now, your stylus needs to fit into the entire profile of your gear. Now, as you can see here, it can't make it to the bottom of this gear. So you can't really expect the machine to deburr the full profile of the part if it can't follow the full profile of the part. So you need to make sure your stylus can fit the entire profile of your gear. Now, once you have that figured out as well, we can move on to the third thing you need, and that is your chamfer mill. You thought we were gonna jump cut, but we are not. Your chamfer mill, now typically we use just a 90 degree four flute chamfer mill in this machine. It goes into an ER style collet. So you just throw it up into the collet, tighten it down, and that's it. So that is everything we need to go over as far as what we need to set up our machine. Now we actually have to set up our machine, which isn't too hard. So let's throw everything in there and let's deburr a gear. Yeah, let's do that. Wow, exciting. I can't wait. Oh, all right, so first thing we're gonna do is put this chamfer mill into our spindle. Now, make sure you put this really far up into the spindle. You will see why in a second. Now, the next thing is going to be the proper stylus. Now, you will notice with your stylus, there is a groove right here. So make sure that groove goes into the pin on the block. If you can't handle that, get into woodworking. Okay, so we will slide our stylus into the block. And now we will tighten down the four millimeter screw that holds our stylus. So now you might be wondering, Donnie, what do we do to set the height of our chamfer mill consistently? Well, if you ask that, then I'm glad you asked because the answer is shim. So I'm gonna set this 50 thousandths shim on my stylus and then I'm going to break loose, without even looking, the chamfer mill. And it will simply drop to my shim. Then all that's left to do is tighten it. Now you don't have to use a 50,000 shim. You can use any size shim you want. As long as you're consistent, everything will work out fine. Then you're gonna get the proper spanner wrenches, which I have here. And you are going to tighten the cap that holds your tool. With that tightened, let's remove our shim. So now that we have everything in there, as far as our tooling goes, let's throw our part in our work holding and then let's go over the one setting you have to change to deburr a gear. Yeah. So now we need to find the position that this thing is going to wrap it to when it deburrs our gear. So the first thing we need to do is go into manual, hit menu, go to cutter position set, and then we'll hit cutter FB jog. So now I can bring this guy down just like this. One important thing to note here, if you put your hand in there and block the light curtain, it won't move. You can hear it moving? Hear it moving? Yeah, so another thing to note, the way this machine works, you can't really crash it right here. Be careful, obviously don't ram things into things, but you can push on this entire milling spindle and it will actually move back and forth. So it's kind of cool how that works. Anyways, so what I'll do is I'll turn the gear so the stylus can go into the bottom of the tooth. 
So right now when I look at my screen, I can see my value is just a little bit over 92 millimeters. Well, I'm gonna go a little bit further than that because I want it to you know, push back on the milling spindle like I just showed you when I pushed it. So I'm gonna hit forward position and I'm gonna say 93.5 enter. So it'll go one millimeter past the bottom of the gear tooth. Now you have another number up here called before amount. This is where it's actually gonna wrap it to before it drops the counterweight. So the reason why this machine can deburr any gear is that it's just a tracer. This technology is actually hundreds of years old. So what it's going to do is it's going to take this number right here, which I'm going to say 12, enter, so that's 12 millimeter. So it's going to go 12 millimeter before 93.5, and then it's gonna drop the counterweight. And because the spindle is rotating, this machine is going to follow the profile of the gear no matter what gear type it is. I mean, if you can just follow these few simple steps, you can deburr any gear. So that right there is how we set our position. So the current setup is not going to work because my chamfer mill is way too high. So I need to bring it down visually in order for it to deburr the part. So how do you bring the chamfer mill down? Well, you can bring the chamfer mill and the entire stylus down with this knob that's on top the milling spindle head. So let's bring it down to an appropriate height to where I think it's gonna chamfer this gear. So if you pull this lever back right here, the entire milling spindle can now move up and down. So now all I have to do is turn this dial up here to a point where I think it's gonna chamfer metal and then relock the milling spindle. And once I'm done, I can hit manual return and send the whole guy back. Now, one important thing to note here, once you break the light curtain or jog anything around, the machine is going to want you to do a reference position return. So once you're done with all your setup and you think you're ready to go, hit reference position return and the door will close. It'll send the milling spindle home and do one rotation with the main chuck. And that's it. That's all you need to know to set this machine up. It is literally the easiest thing ever. That's actually not all you need to know. There's one more thing. There's one more thing after all this. So the last thing I want to cover in today's video is let's say you do all these steps and your chamfer comes out uneven on your gear, either left to right or back and forth. Well, if you look right here, you can crack these two screws loose. And then there are two adjustment screws on the side and the back of the block that holds the stylus. You can use these to make your chamfer completely even around your gear. And most likely the first time you set this up, you probably will have to make these adjustments. So just know that these are there for whenever you do this. So that is it for today's video. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. We have all sorts of exciting things going on here at Dynamic that we will be showing you here in the near future. We are putting a robot or cue box with our links right here that's going to load slugs for our open house coming up. And then when you look over here, we actually have a giant hole, well not hole, but gap, in our showroom for where two machines are gonna go. We actually have a DVF 6500 coming right there and a DNX 2100. It's a new mill turn that DN just put out. It's incredibly affordable, incredibly awesome. I'm gonna be doing tons of videos on it, showing you guys how cool it is. So that's what's coming up in the near future. Um, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you hit like, please, and uh, subscribe if you haven't, and all the other YouTube stuff I have to say at the end of every video. Yeah, hope you have a good day.